Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N R Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been working on vocabulary words that you will find in chapter 3 of this book right here, the HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. As I said, we've been working on the vocabulary words. In addition to the vocabulary words, if you need help on the math portion of the exam, if there is any problem, in, any math problem in this book that is giving you trouble, you will find that we have solved every single math problem from this book in our math series of HESI Day 1 through 50. Just type in HESI Math Day 1 and it will pop right up. There are 50 videos in the series. In addition to that, if you need more practice, if you need more practice problem, you will find that the math on the T's is very comparable, very similar to what you will find on the HESI. And there are 80 videos in that series. And that should, that should suffice. That should be more than 20. Let's, let's get going then. Today is our vocabulary lesson number 21. The very first word we have on the uh, very first word we have today is already on the blackboard, as you can see. The word is pathology. 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 Sometimes, if the sometimes if the pronunciation is too simple and you try to stop it, it's a level it gets very awkward. Pathology is the word. As you can see, it ends with it has a suffix as the the end the ending of ology. Like in as in biology, sociology, uh, and therefore it, it tells you it's a study of something. What is the study of pathology? Is a study of diseases. Is a study of diseases. It, this is where the doctors, the medical people, study the causes, the processes, the development, and the consequences of the given disease. How? What causes the disease? What are the consequences? How does it develop? What are the processes as to how a given disease goes through different different stages. Notice how we pronounce it, processes. If you are interested, I would like you to watch a video which as of right now is not there but it will be loaded uh, in the very near future. A video with the title of mispronounced pronouns, or mispronounced plural rather, mispronounced plural. Watch this video where you will learn some common plurals that are mispronounced, that people tend to mispronounce and I, I heard them being mispronounced on a regular basis to the point where they get uh, begin to get on, uh, on one's nerve and uh, typically typically youngsters in my SAT prep courses I hear them all the time they go around mispronouncing this word SAT courses, ACT courses they mispronounce this plural all the time and therefore I'm going to make a video where we'll talk about a few of the plurals anyway let's get going so that, that was pathology. It is, the, it is a study of the causes of the disease, the consequences, the processes as to what it goes through, the, and, and how it develops. The next word we have is Poster, posterior, posterior, poster, posterior is one pronunciation. Posterior is one pronunciation. Equally acceptable pronunciation of this word is also posterior. The first syllable can be po or pa. Posterior, posterior, depending on the person. They are both considered equally acceptable. It has two meanings. First meaning is, first meaning is, it simply means that it's something that is located, something that is located in the back, something that is located in the back, or, or just give me a second, I need a little break. Something that is located in the back, in the back or towards the back. Something that is located, something that is located, something that is located in the rear. Something that is located in the rear. That's the first meaning, something that is located in the rear. Second meaning is, so that's the first meaning. 
A posterior can also be used as in something that happens later in time. Something that happens later in time. Something that happens later in time, as in it can be used, it can be used, this word can be used as a synonym. This, this word posterior can be used as a synonym of subsequent. Subsequent. And of course, in that scenario, the adverb would be, in that scenario, the adverb would be. Posteriorly. Posteriorly simply means subsequently. Something that happens subsequently, something that happens later on in time, is said to have said to have happened posteriorly. Well, an interesting note, a side note, just so you know, if you were to use this word, if you were to use this word in the plural. It has a slightly different meaning, as you know already. Posteriors is just is just another way of bums, your bums, your bottom, your buttocks. That's what it is. If you use them in plural, posteriors. But posterior in singular simply means something that happens subsequently. It also means something that is located towards the back of something, something that is located towards the rear of something. Let's get going. So one more time, if it's used in the plural, it means it means your bottoms, bums, your bottoms, or your buttocks. Posteriors. One hundred and ten. Next word is Potent. The word is potent. Now, what does it mean to be potent? It simply means that it has something has or something is capable of having an effect, something that is strong enough, something that is not weak. Potent simply means having, having, or producing a strong effect having or producing a, a, a strong effect. Something that is that is uh, effectual obviously. Something that is effectual is same as saying it has an effect, it, it, is, it, it works, it does the job it is supposed to do, it's potent. It's producing the desired effect. If it's producing the desired effect you say it is potent. The antonym of the word would be antonym of the word would be the reason we bring up the antonym is because the pronunciation changes slightly. Portent here is not important, it is, it's pronounced M and the second syllable becomes P, impotent. As I said, it's not potent, but the antonym is not important, it's impotent. The second syllable is P, impotent. What does it mean when you describe something as being impotent? It's simply because it's the opposite, it simply means that it lacks physical strength. Something that lacks, something that la lacks physical strength. Something that is weak, something that is weak or powerless or powerless, not powerful. Something that is powerless, something that is, something that is, ineffectual, something that is, ineffectual. It has one more meaning, impotent, the word impotent has one more meaning. We won't go there, only because I'm a shy guy, but uh, when the th thingy no longer works, or it does not work as it's meant to work and uh, how should I finish it and the gentleman is unable to rise to the occasion that situation is described as being 
impotent. Let's move on, shall we? It is not good. Do you understand? Couple of names of couple of very well-known commercials come to mind because they spend an inordinate amount of money, tremendous amount of money on the commercials for these drugs. Two of the names come to my mind right now, but we won't mention them. Let's move on then. Let's learn the next word. The word is... Now this word, this word is a noun, and this word is actually not in the book. What you find in the book is the adjective of this word, but before we can talk about the adjective, Let's learn the word, let's learn noun first, you understand? So that we have a better understanding of the adjective. What is this word? How do we pronounce it? It's a tricky word. Let's take a look. Press a piss. Precipice. What is a precipice? A precipice is the very end, the extreme, the extreme edge, the very edge, the extreme edge, the very edge of an um, extremely extremely steep rock or a cliff but that's not enough it has to have with a with a flat face flat face so if you have a rock that looks like this and you're standing right here that's not what we're describing here precipice it has a flat face here and you're standing at the very edge you're standing right here at the very edge you're at the precipice so that's the literal meaning this is the this is the literal meaning the word is used metaphorically most of the time and metaphorically metaphorically it would mean that you are at the brink of a very dangerous situation brink of a of a disaster if you like of a disaster or a very dangerous situation. So if someone uh, describes a scenario where they tell you that they were lucky enough to walk away from the precipice, they're telling us, they're telling us that they were at the very edge of something very nasty, but they were lucky enough to have escaped. They had a lucky escape. They were at the very precipice of a financial disaster, financial meltdown. But something happened and they had a rescue at the very end, at the last minute. Or the 12th, 12th hour, I believe. Yes, I believe that's the, that's the expression. And that is called the brink of a disaster, a brink of a, a, brink of a dangerous situation. Because you were standing at the precipice of, 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 of the situation at the brink of that uh, disaster. And the word is precipice. Now that we understand this word, let's learn the adjective. Let's learn the adjective. We're going to continue with the same thing here. We're just going to raise the thing, raise, raise this part here. Insert the changes that we need to make. Precipi, precipi, thus. And how do we pronounce it? Well, let's write it down there. The first, actually even the first syllable changes. Even the first syllable, the pronunciation changes. It's no longer press. See, the first syllable here was press, precipice. Precipice is no longer the same. The first syllable is pre, pre, c, Precipitous. Precipitous. Precipitous is the adjective. Precipitous. You have to say slowly, especially if you're non native like myself. What does it mean when you describe something as precipitous, as an adjective, a situation that is described, you put an adjective in front of it as precipitous? It simply means that it is like a 
it is like a precipice. It is like a precipice. That's what literally means. Precipitous literally means like a precipice. Like a precipice. In other words, it is very steep. In other words, it's very steep. So this is a literal meaning. Like a which is why we have to learn the literal meaning first. Like a precipice or very steep. Very steep. What does it mean metaphorically? What does it mean metaphorically if you if you insert if you put an adjective in front of, uh, of some situation and describe it as precipitous? It simply means it simply means that it's abrupt and it is not it's not very controlled. Abrupt is abrupt, rapid and and uncontrolled. Why is it abrupt, rapid and uncontrolled? Well, think about it. If you were at the precipice, uh, uh, if you were at the precipice and if you were to fall, of course you fall because of the fact that it's a very steep uh, location and it's a flat face, you're going to come down straight, your fall is going to be very abrupt, it's going to be very rapid and you, of course you will have no control over the situation. Abrupt and ill control if you like, it means abrupt, abrupt and in control. The question is question is where are you going to come across this term in the medical field? Well, it is used very often by the doctors when we describe about fall in the blood pressure. Uh, they talk about, the, uh, let's, let's put them on the blackboard so you can see the precipitous fall of blood pressure. Where can we insert it? Precipitous, precipitous fall of blood pressure which means that the blood pressure began to fall very rapidly, very abruptly, very uncontrollably. It very uncontrollably. It was a very dangerous situation. The, the drop in the blood pressure was not gradual. It was not predictable. It was uncontrolled. It was steep. It was abrupt. Precipitous fall in the blood pressure. Or we can talk about a precipitous fall in, uh, in the body temperature. Precipitous fall in the body temperature. Again the same thing. The, the drop in the temperature was abrupt, it was very rapid, it was uncontrolled. Or we can talk about precipitous decline or we can talk about precipitous fall in somebody's fortune. Yes, he was quite well to do. It was a very quite, it was a well to do family but then something happened, this, this and this happened. They made a poor judgment, they made a poor investment and that caused a precipitous fall in their family fortune. Do you understand? So it can be used, well it is used here, not can be, it, it, it is used, as I said, most of the time, metaphorically. But literally it means to be standing at the, at the very edge of the cliff and uh, therefore if you were to fall, it will be uncontrolled, it will be quick, it will be abrupt, it will be extremely rapid fall. Once it begins, once it begins, it goes down very quickly and you have no control over it. Such a situation is said to be precipitous. Let's carry on then. Next one. As you can see, as you can see, we have a tendency to spend a great deal of time going over a word because the idea is not just to memorize the word, the idea is to understand and appreciate the meaning of it. Not just the superficial meaning, but understand it thoroughly, what lies behind it. That was the end of my sermon. Amen. The next word we have is 113 and the word is predispose. What does it mean if you predispose? Pre, D, predispose. If you predispose, that simply means that you are inclined to do something. To, to make someone, to make someone inclined to do something in advance.
to make to make someone or something more more susceptible or more likely or more likely more susceptible or more likely to happen and if that's the case you say that you were predisposed to it you was predisposed to the idea that the project will overrun it will go over the budget it was no surprise to us we knew it we anticipated it uh, we expected it we we were he was predisposed to that notion it's not a big deal if you tell tell him that it went over over the budget he knows that he's he, he's, he's prepared for it to be predisposed to a notion means simply to be inclined to do something to be to to be inclined to do something what's the noun of it the noun of predisposed is simply is simply predisposition and i'm going to put down the pronunciation as always pre this this is the part you have to pay attention this per not for this per so there are two things two areas where we have to pay attention to first thing that it has a z sound disposition pre disposition and the second thing is that as you can see this per not po not disposition disposition it has a z sound in it and a per sound disposition let's carry on the next word we want to learn today is the word that you see here it's on the blackboard and since we introduced it let's learn this word what does it mean to be inclined to do something to, to be inclined Again, this word has literal meaning and metaphorical meaning. Literally, when we talk about an incline, when we talk about an incline, when we say that his house is on the incline or my driveway is on the incline, it simply means it, 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 it is at an angle. Right here is the street and here is my house. It, it's on an incline. Do you understand? That's the literal meaning. To be on an incline, that means to be on an angle. It's not sitting flat. It's on an incline. It's a, it's, it's a little steep, the drive is a little steep, or it could be a little steep or it could be a lot, a lot uh, steeper, depends on the, depending on the inclination of the driveway. Inclination is the noun. But that's the literal meaning. That's not what we're talking about here. You will come across the word being used metaphorically. What does it mean to be inclined? To be inclined. Let's learn it. To be inclined means exactly what we said, to be susceptible to do something, to, uh, to, to be susceptible, to have a tendency to do something, to have a preference of the, of, of, for something. To have, inclined means having a preference for something or having a, oh, I can't believe I'm repeating the, oh, that's not, we're not repeating, the word here, here was disposition, disposition. If you have a disposition for it, you have an inclination for it, you are likely to do it, you have an affinity to do it, you have a predilection for it, you're more likely to do it. Disposition. Having a preference, disposition, or tendency, or as I said, affinity, affinity, or Or, the last word I said was, I don't know why I said it, it's not in my notes, it, it's not in my notes, and I don't know how to spell the bloody thing. The word I used was, uh, to have an inclination, to have a affinity, predilection was the word. I'm going to spell it, it may be correct, it may not be correct. The 
the word is predilection. To have predilection for something means to have an affinity for something. You are more likely to do it. You have an inclination for it. You are you have a preference for it. If you have a preference for something, if you are attracted to something, you're more inclined towards it. You're more inclined towards it. You're predisposed to it. You have a predisposition to it. That was the end for today. All right. Amen.